And you gonna murder this one and murder that one yeah. Talking all that bullshit I'ma put it to you like this, yo This is for the nerds This is for the brainiacs This is what we deserve Go ahead and play it back You ain't gonna touch me You not gonna do nothing You are not above me I bet you wish you was me I know it, I know What is poppin' everybody? And welcome back to another special episode of the Only Friends Podcast. Well, you know, it's me and my only friends, which includes, but it's not limited to, Tart 2! Where's the... <laughs> we got it, baby. We got it. What's, We're here. What's poppin', man? How you doing? Good, good, you know. Coming off a uh, fun weekend and... You know, you get the South Point grinding. I got a session in over the weekend. Yeah, a couple sessions. One on Friday, one on Saturday. How's yeah. that winning streak? Uh, two. All right, all right. It's a two. That's all a streak. Right. Yeah, I, no, I think streak. three is a streak. I need we need to win the next session for it to be officially a streak. Obviously, later today, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's pop and sidekick. How you feeling? Um, it was a long weekend. It was a very long weekend that ended in nothing but sadness. So much sadness. I believe there's a video of me bemoaning. Check the Discord. Me uh, just wallowing I'm as a, as one tends to do. I only saw you on the yeah. couch this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I was on a couch. I was on a couch. It seems rough. Sounds sorry, like you're, sorry, puppy, I don't have it. It doesn't seem like you're in the yeah. muck. Seems yeah, like you do. I just, I just replied to it and said, cut to this. <laughs> and, and, and I'm clicking on it. My Sunday in a nutshell. I'm getting nothing. What? Yeah. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh, Funny. I'm no. looking at it. It's not popping up on my. <laughs> in fact, that link looks completely different from all the other links that. You Wait. What, so, what are you talking about, man? This just sounds like you're down bad. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm down bad. <laughs> okay, that one. Works. It's twitter.com versus x.com. They're hey, both look, the exact I'm same, man. I'm just telling you, Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Let's see what's going on over here. I'm bummed out. I'm bummed <laughs> out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm bummed out. Yeah, that's my granddad. I'm bummed out. Yep. Yeah. You bummed out, Burke? I'm bummed, bummed out. out. I'm bummed out. Steelers are down bad. I'm bummed out. <sighs> Short week this Kenny, week. Ken, Gotta, Kenny. You know, uh, Tomlin came out today and said, it's a game time decision. They've, they've already decided he's not going to play. No, he's playing. He's not going to play. He's going to play. Who book are it. we referring to? Uh, Pickett. You want to book it? He hurt his ribs. There's no, uh, they didn't say what it was. Yeah, they, yeah, they just said they hurt his ribs. And then um, I think originally they, they said that he like, was most likely not going to play. And then Tomlin came out today and said, we're evaluating the situation, and it's a game time decision. Yeah, he's just keeping the Titans on their toes. So tell Mink, me, make us out there. So tell me next. Yeah, tell me, tell me, please. Mm. Who's next? Mason Rudolph? No, mm. Trubisky. I wish mm. it was. Mr. Biscuit. I, actually, I actually wish it was Rudolph. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Mr. Biscuit. Mr. Biscuit's down bad. He's maybe <laughs> the worst quarterback I've ever seen in the history of the league. Literally every time he throws the ball, nah. I I just grimace and i'm just like oh you know uh, what it is uh, see they, they didn't work this out in practice mm -hmm. uh they should have mm -hmm. he's colorblind oh oh he's he can't tell the difference between green jerseys and black and gold jerseys <laughs> no i wish that was the case he'd probably throw more to the steelers yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that seems that's like fair. a very big problem it's insane oh. the, the first like one of the first throws of the game he threw it into quadruple coverage yeah like, what did you think was going to happen? I mean, they only have 11 guys on defense, and they put four of them on one receiver. Someone else mm -hmm. has to be open, man. Yeah. What is happening here? He stinks. This guy, he fucking stinks, man. What's the uh, Steelers' record now? They're four and three, and they were coming up on a three-game home stretch where the expectation was at least two and one. The Jaguars' game was always going to be Jaguars kind of are up good. in the air. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Titans, mm. Titans aren't that great. Oh, they're starting, they are. They're starting a backup quarterback. A backup? He's a rookie. You know nothing. A backup? He's a backup. Are, are rookies, make, are rookies making, not backups? No, he's a starting now. Tannehill's hurt, you idiot. No, he's yeah. out. No, yeah, because he's hurt. Yeah, because he's, he's hurt. No. 
It's, Do you understand how backups and starters work? This is the Will, um, what is it, Le- Levis? What's yeah, his last name? That's close enough. It's the sure. Will Levis show. Okay, wh- where were you going with I know nothing about backups? Because he's not really a backup anymore. He's exactly a backup. He had three listen, touchdowns in a great game. He's no longer a backup. It's going to be, listen, it's going to be a close game. If we can manage to score three points. No shit, it's going to be a close if, game. If we can manage to score three points, we'll win. But it's it's either that or it's going to be a tie. I don't know. We almost got the nine to six uh, ending. We did. That I expected. But yeah. the referees took three off the board for the Steelers. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Jaguars decided to put up a late touchdown. Mm-hmm. Very unlucky. Very unlucky. It was uh, it was one of the ugliest games I think I've watched in a long time. And it was a sheer beatdown on both sides of the offensive side of the ball. Like The Steelers' defense looked so fucking good. Right. And their offense looked so inept. Oh, so bad. It's so painful to watch. It really is. Everybody who like is, oh, give it the war and Najee stinks. It's like every time someone touches the ball, Doesn't they matter. have immediate contact at the line. It, really it doesn't just doesn't matter. matter. There's nowhere to go. No one's blocking. Uh, I've had it. I just read something that I've the had Giants it. had eight passing yards this weekend. They, <laughs> that game was not the NFL. I mean, there's no reason for me to watch it because, you know, I'm not rooting for anybody. It's just like, oh, yay, great, great. So I, I didn't turn it on. That game was the equivalent of what I imagine B-League soccer to be. They punted 23 times between the two of them. That's, that, a lot. that's not real. Yeah, that's real. 23? 23 that's, times. That's not hyperbolic? That is not hyperbolic. 23 times. The <laughs> Jets punted 11. The Giants punted 12. The back, so the Giants' backup quarterback got hurt in the fourth quarter. Their third string guy didn't throw a pass until overtime. Mm. Wow. He played 12 minutes of the fourth quarter. Smart. Didn't throw a pass. Well, it probably would have. Honestly, ended. the Steelers should do that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Trubisky, mm-hmm. four for eight, 67 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> Steelers win. Exactly. Wow. I hope. So. Real smash mouth, smash mouth football. Yeah, uh, that was that was one of the worst games, and it, the worst part is it was the only one going once they went to OT. Did you say smash mouth or smack mouth? Smash mouth. Oh, because smack mouth is coming for you if the <laughs> picking stops playing. <laughs> Um, you know, I, just, just a little reminder. I really need him to play. <laughs> no. it's, it's a very bad time for a short Listen, week. Listen, I, I know, I know Berkey's running through the numbers thinking like, okay, um, probably this game, this game. You need this <laughs> Thursday game. Yeah. You can't have. No, I was counting. On, you were counting this one as a lock. I was counting on a two and one stretch yeah. here in this three yeah. game homestand. Yeah. Who they play after that? Do, do you know? uh, they have a home game against um, somebody very bad. Mm. Very no, bad. I, uh, the Colts. Be, it's the Colts. No, it's not the Colts. Uh. Colts are later. I think uh, it'd be better if if this week and next week were switched. For yeah, sure. right. Uh, it might be Green Bay. Oh, it is Green Bay. Yeah, Ooh. it is Green Bay. Yeah, right. it'd be it'd be really nice if those two weeks were switched. Mm-hmm. But good news is we won't face Tannehill. Bad news is uh, it doesn't fucking matter man defense is gonna score 14 points and that's all we'll need they are gonna harass this rookie yeah quarterback yeah. guys this man is Who's about to go the fuck off on you okay bro just because listen just because uh atlanta decided not to cover d hop i doesn't mean joey porter isn't gonna lock him down you yeah. don't know about they young peasy they got a tight end lamanda doesn't know well, about young peasy either apparently not no, I don't know how i forgot about well, he goes who's peasy i go joey fucking porter man uh, take your PZ. yinzer card your terrible towel. I just take it away. <laughs> <laughs> like the Jaguars did when they intercepted uh, Trubisky. Sons of bitches. They're going to find out next time they come here in 2028. 20, <laughs> no. <laughs> Mark my words. You heard it here first. That's going to come back and bite them in the first round of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. What? When, when they fucking have to host the Steelers yep. down in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. And we bowl through them yep. and take a huge shit in the middle of their feet. All right. All right. You heard it here first. Mm-hmm. I'm getting out of the muck. Guabo, you're in the muck today? Apparently, yes. Oh, I got to tell you, oh, you're, I am. In, you're in the muck. <laughs> All right, Guapo. I, uh... I'm noticing a trend, some blind on blind action here. Mm-hmm. Why don't you walk us through this hand a little bit and okay. uh, and tell us what happened? 
What's got you in the muck? Take a look. Little blind on blind. Mr. OJ, he is a reg at uh, 200 NL. Um, OJ did it. That's his name. That's his name. <laughs> so I kind of feel like I have blinders on when I get into these spots. Um, the first thing I notice here, obviously, is that I have the ace of clubs. And in my mind, I'm just thinking I'm going to so, go. G g yeah, give your hand for the, uh, the listeners out there in Spotify. Sure. So I have the ace of clubs, nine of hearts. One. I'm in the big blind and the small blind uh, opened. Okay. I defended, and the flop is queen of clubs, three of clubs, deuce of diamonds. All right, 11 bucks in the pot. That is correct. Um, our opponent decides to bet range. Kind of a small bet here. And Now, you I say have, he, bet, he bet range. You just assume he's betting his entire range here? Um, with I just a, think with a small just, bet like that? Right, and I just think it sounds cool to say that because I, I sound more informed now. Okay, so <laughs> he goes third pot, <laughs> quarter pot. Eh, about third, yeah, third. But I have the ace of clubs, tortoise. You do. And that means that if I have a hand like ace deuce of clubs, ace six of clubs, ace seven, ace eight, ace nine, mm -hmm. I'm not always raising those. Yep. All ace right, flop. let's yeah go go through the hand and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll start start to break down. All right. I decide to uh, put more money in the middle okay. here. Okay. Three X is raised. Yep. He calls. So mm. now, since we've been talking about so much geo sizing. I decide to go Geo 2 here and try to get all of the money in. Okay. On the turn king of clubs. Turn king That's of correct. clubs, correct. Right. So turn king of clubs, we have the ace of clubs in our hands. You over bet pot. He, he bought 110 calls, and then you go 110 again. And yeah, and then I just go for the shove on the river. The river is a brick, uh, six of diamonds. Mm. We're going to work on your math a little bit. It was about... Pot in the third on, on the it. turn. Pot yeah. in the third on the And yeah. at this point, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but it helps to really yell at the screen. Because mm. this is what I was doing. I was, just, mean, fold. I was yelling. Just <laughs> fold. fold. <laughs> just fold. I have flush. And okay. He was there for like a good 15 seconds. And then finally. He let it go. He let it go. Feels good, man. Feels good. Thank you. Uh, why, why, why are you in the muck? This seems standard to me. Um, so the reason I feel like maybe it's not, uh, the more I look at it, I think it could have chosen. Um, I think it could have chosen better cards. Um, so, like I said earlier, I, I get kind of blinded by the fact that I do block the nuts. Um, but it obviously, would have been better to have maybe like a hand like Ace Deuce with the Ace of Clubs, or Ace Four, or Ace Five with the Ace of Clubs. Um, I haven't had a chance to look this up, and I'm still trying to get better at trying to find hands uh, to bluff with. I think something that really stuck out for me when I went to the academy is um, there was a part where you talked about how when we first learned this game, we're, we're learning in terms of what beats what, like hand rankings. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily, hey, this is how you bluff. These are the cards that you should be using, and this is why. Okay. Uh, so now when I'm playing, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm trying a little bit too hard to find them. Um, but yeah, this is what I decided to go with. Okay. What uh, what what does the peanut gallery think of this one? I like it. I'm I'm a fan of it. You know, and then, you know, yeah. You might it it might not be the absolute best hand you have to bluff, but it's a damn good candidate you have to bluff. I mean, yeah. I I think um my initial reaction when I saw this was uh it looked like the the sizings were uh wrong, like specifically the turn size. When the flush card falls, I think. You're gonna to want to go somewhere around half. I think that's what you would do with the nuts. Uh, it, what you should do with the, the nuts. Isn't the goal to use geo sizes? See, this is the thing: is I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Is like, when is it the goal to want to use geo sizing? Like for me, yeah. As soon as I got to the turn, I'm Probably like, okay, I want to use the... I want to use two equal sizes here because I mm -hmm. have nothing to worry about. Yeah, I think I think when um when the flush card comes, you don't you don't use geo sizing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you'd be going smaller when the flush card comes, like. Um, the the simple answer to when to use geo is when a board texture affords you to have two bet sizes so when there's a clear delineation between um the amount of equity necessary to over bet versus the amount of equity necessary to value bet um would so, you would you agree that that turn card is a is, is not a geo two size? correct wow now can you explain that again why because i feel like this is a great card to go geo two on what would you do with a hand like queen three 
What would I do with a hand like queen three? <laughs> yeah, I would slow down here. But right, you, and that's one of your highest equity hands that you can have raising the flop. Queen when you three, say slow down, yeah, do you mean check or do you mean make a different betting uh, size? No, I mean check. Yeah, sorry. Okay. I should you probably check? be more clear. Yeah. Two pair? Yeah. I, I mean, you could check two pair sometimes, but like... Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to check back queen three here. Why? Uh, I don't necessarily love the king. I don't love that the flush got there. And obviously, since I have queen three, I don't have clubs in hand. You're scared of stuff. Uh, so <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> You're scared of stuff. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, if you... Uh, if I mean, you clearly, bet, I'm not scared always. Do you have you, a nightlight? If you bet queen three and he has queen jack with a jack of clubs, what's he going to do? Say it again. If you bet queen three and he is queen jack with the jack of clubs, what's he going to do? He's going to check. No, 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 no. He's out of position. He checks to you. You bet queen three and he has a hand like queen jack, jack of clubs. He's going to call. Yeah, of course. That's, That's what you want. It's just abundantly clear we can target a portion of his range to get value from worth, right? He's yeah. just going to have king jack with a club. He's going to have... Jack-10 with a club. He's going to have Queen-X with a club. Hold on a second. Jack-10 with a club. You think he's calling my check-raise with Jack-10 with a club? Well, you didn't check-raise. You raised in position. Or sorry, when I just raised him on the flop? Um, I don't think he's coming along with Jack-10. Maybe with not, but he'll have Ace-10 with a club. Uh, he'll have Ace-5, Ace-4 with a club. He'll have 5-4 with a club. Maybe not 5-4. He might not open that, but probably should at least some of the time. He'll have 5-4 of diamonds. Those hands don't just auto-fold. Right, like, uh, when flush cards come, it immediately divides the equity. And the equity separating, like, the nuts, which will be flushes, and then all other hand rankings is going to be um, somewhat linear in nature. So flushes are obviously going to be worth more than sets, but they're not worth so much more that sets become devalued, right? Whereas, like, if this were the king of diamonds for instance, now you're going to want to have a geo size for sure. Because now the, the equities condense quite a bit. The nuts, which is a set, is very vulnerable. So it's not nearly as nutted as a flush would be, right? And the hands that are drawing against a set on a two flush board uh, are much higher in equity as well. So what ends up happening is the equity starts to pull more towards the middle. That's when we're going to use geosizings. That's when we're going to polarize more often. So when the nuts are like super nutted, we're a lot less likely to use geosize because uh, just the pressure of betting already applies a lot of weight to the middling equity. So it would be a mistake if I got here with the A6 of clubs and I just decided to go like 110% again? Yeah. Really? The way I look Not, at... Well, you didn't bet 110. You bet like 130. 130 yeah. But, uh, yeah. Big difference though. Okay. Because like generally when flush or straight cards complete, you're going to be capped at around pot. Yeah. The way I look at it, when you get the turn, it's like we don't mind being called. Like be at betting like 75% the pot. Like it's just comfortable. And the best part about it is we have 2x pot on river to jam if we brick, if we want to continue this way. So my mindset is I want a fold and I want it soon. Like I see this turn card and I'm like, okay, I'm committing 42 to win 34 and I kind of want the hand to just end here. Like I want to put in a big bet. I want him to go away. Like I, you maybe, should, yeah. I think, I think what has you in your muck or what has you in the muck is your desires. Mm -hmm. You don't have control <laughs> over any of that. Yeah. And instead you need to be thinking in terms of equity. You have the most equitable card in the deck in the ace of clubs but your opponent can't just like start folding pair plus, right? So there's like a clear portion of range. Uh, man, I created that buzz. Fuck. Uh, there's a clear portion of range that when you bet, never folds. He never folds a flush. He never folds a set. He never folds two pair. Um, and he's unlikely a lot of to pair fold plus flush draws. pair plus type hands. Yeah. So if he does have a hand like even Jack Ten of Diamonds, like he'll fold for one thirty but he's not going to fold for 75. Yeah. Or at least not always. I mean, maybe he does. I mean, I, I don't know how good he is, but my whole point is like mistakes can be made um, with that type of hand. And the more of those hands that come along on the turn, the more profitable your river bluff becomes. Right? Now, Jack 10 just goes unimproved. Now, 
queen jack with a club goes unimproved. Um, you know, things of that nature. All right, so 2E was a mistake there. Yeah, I would say that just my general notes would be that mechanically your sizes are, are, are incorrect on all three streets. Um, but I think that what's more important to take away from this lesson-wise is not the sizing errors because, uh, you know, they're born out of uh, a deeper seated issue that um, is what's continually putting you in the muck, which is not really thinking in terms of equity distribution, right? You're, you're, you're thinking, you're playing the nuts or air game every time you put yourself in an aggressive node. And that's okay, it'll work. Like it's better than doing the opposite, which is just putting yourself in a bluff catch mode every single time you're, you're given the opportunity to. Um, the, the issue becomes that you're gonna miss a lot of value for hands that fall in the linear spectrum of hands worth betting, like a hand like queen three of spades there is a very clear value bet. Um, on not, the turn. Yeah. And it's like, if you check it back some of the time, that's I fine. Sh- I was You're gonna, gonna say, your I, I should be checking back a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, can check the, we can check the sim, but I would imagine that you check back on this turn card around half the time. And then I do have one question for you. Um, what would be a better side card here uh, in terms of this hand being a good candidate for a bluff? I think if you size differently on the flop, your turn, uh, this is a good turn candidate, but it's a shutdown on the river. It's a shutdown on the river. You're gonna want to have like jack ten with a club. You're gonna want to have like ten nine with a club. Those types of hands. What about the side card that I have now? So ace of clubs nine hearts. Nine doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. I feel like having a four or a five would be better because now at least I have. A- sure, but that's like just only on the six river, right? Um, the biggest issue is that you're not gonna have the better bluffs because you're not gonna raise them enough on the flop. One, your flop sizing is too large. Uh, which is already going to discount a lot of the hands that you're supposed to raise, like jack-10 with a club. So you're just supposed to raise a lot of backdoor hands here. Um, so you're unlikely to do that. And then number two, even if you were sizing appropriately, you have to reach because it's queen-three-deuce. So the only natural bluffs are ace-4, ace-5, 4-5, five, 5-6. Five, five, Those are clear, 7-5, I guess. Those are very obvious. But you need to be like going down to the next level of what happens when overcards come. I need to have coverage. What happens when clubs come i need to have coverage and not in the sense of i make the best hand but in the sense that i have a future street bluff right that's why jack 10 with a jack of clubs very important you can turn middle pair and check back that's really good you can turn open end and continue to follow through that's really good you can turn a club continue to follow through that's really good a hand like ace 10 with a club you know you found it with ace nine but like would you have done the same with the nine of clubs that type of thing um, much better then, then we'd be talking sidecar because now ace 10 with the 10 of clubs is much better do you right? really do you think if we raise flop bet turn for B75 to pot we just shut down river yeah yeah see that part is weird for me you have better bluffs and I just give up yeah you just have like way better bluffs to choose from you're gonna have a lot of you, if you're raising flop appropriately you're gonna be raising a lot um, and is it better for him for, to unblock the ace of clubs because you want him to have the ace of clubs in his hand? Correct. Yeah. Right? So he should have double calls with like ace four of club yeah. or ace four with a club, ace five with a club, ace deuce with a club, ace or three, the, whatever. Yeah. Ace jack with a club. Like those hands are going to bet, call your raise, check, face a bet. Not like you're not going to turn ace jack with ace of clubs into a bluff on the turn if you're out of position. Your hand's too good. You don't need that. That's not the right combo draw to do that with. Okay. Right. Um, so yeah, by you holding the ace of clubs on the end, it it like blocks his auto folds. Um, and we can we can look at the whiz and see we can we we can see what the old whiz has to say about this one. Let's see what the whiz says. I'm interested. Okay. Um. Yeah. So no real shock here. Uh. He. So he actually has a quarter pot bet or a check, but I switched it for what he chose, which is closer to 35%. Um, He can basically choose, choose his own adventure, nothing pure checks and nothing pure bets kind of thing. Um, So it doesn't really matter as long as he's mixing at some frequency. He should be checking at a pretty high frequency though, but he chooses bet. That's fine. You can see now that like we're supposed to raise nearly 20% of the time. So we have a lot 
a lot of a lot of raises right and if we sort for it's not that i touched my mic um i touched my mic and created a buzz my apologies um but yeah if we sort for like uh <coughs> hands that possess a club i haven't used wizard in a while i'm not sure anyway uh you can see that like a lot of our raises are coming from the club region but way less so the ace of clubs than you would think right so it's just choosing like ace jack off no club to start raising nearly in full ace jack of hearts or sorry ace of hearts jack of diamonds uh ace of spades jack of diamonds these so are like 80 in percent intuitively raises. that i don't understand that like I I would think that it would want to use the ace of clubs. I'm so confused. No, because this hand has a lot of showdown value. It and can just call, call. Well, no. It doesn't want to call, call. What do you mean? Ace, jack, no club. No, oh, no, no. Oh, with a club. No, With ace, a club. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A hand like ace, jack with one club is just like a very happy bluff catcher. You can just like call twice pretty easily. Um, unimproved or whatever. And then as you start to go down the ace rankings, then you start to pull in the ace of clubs. So you can see that your hand starts to make it. Ace nine's like one of our, it, it's our best worst ace. So like ace 10 uh, with clubs don't raise. I was, I was wrong. Like ace 10, 10 of clubs doesn't raise. These hands are too good. So then it starts to go like ace nine, uh, both nine of clubs and ace of clubs starts to raise. And now the offsuit ones don't. Same thing with like ace eight, uh, ace seven. A6. Because they're not that good. Right. So A6 is where uh, it starts to delineate again. I guess a little bit of A7, um, but more so A6. It's only choosing the six of clubs. Uh, so it's not actually raising with the ace of clubs. Um, but back when we get to A5, now where we have a gut shot is choosing. like the, It's basically treating it as a combo draw. I mean, it's just because we have no show. I mean, it's just less so down value. And that's where the line's drawn. Well, the equity for ace four and ace five is just like so much higher. Mm -hmm. So ace four, ace five, ace three uh, with a club. These hands are like the equity so high that they're like, you know, kind of teetering on your value range. So these are used as uh, a balancing mechanism. Uh, you can see that ace deuce doesn't raise. So I, your, or your uh, instinct was like, oh, I'd rather block bottom set kind of thing. Not really. Um, doesn't really choose to. It, it does it a little bit with like ace deuce of clubs um, as well as like spades and hearts for whatever reason. Um, but I imagine that's just to get to like cheap showdown. We're raising very small. So, you know, it's like pulling from a ton of different areas. It's going to raise a lot of queen X for value. Um, it's going to raise like, you know, pretty much any any sort of draws at some reasonable frequency, but like what matters more to me is the offsuit varieties that you choose. So it, it pulls a lot from the Broadway region. Um, King Jack with a club is a pretty high frequency raise. Uh, a hand like King 10 is a pretty high frequency raise with or without a club, more so without a club, um, mainly just because it like wraps the queen, I guess, uh, and unblocks their natural calls. Um, and then you can see it's pretty aggressive with its pocket pairs, right? So like fours with a club goes pretty hard. Even fours without a club still kind of goes pretty hard. Uh, fives with a club, same thing. These are going to be what allow you to find like future street bluffs on, on certain runouts. So yeah, I mean, if we change it to your size, I think what will end up happening is, um, a lot of those raises will just disappear. You chose what? Half pot ish, give or take. You made it like 12, right? He made yeah. 12, yeah. 12 and a half. Yeah, so this is set up for half of that. So, yeah, about 55%. And now you see the strategy like shifts pretty heavily. You go from almost 20% raise to just uh, a little over 10. And most of this ace X just disappears. Now it's like very sensitive to being ace four, ace five, ace three. Uh, ace six, ace seven. So ace eight, ace nine, just like completely fall off. They're no really, no longer really chosen. Um, you're just committing too many chips for a hand that can be utilized as a bluff catcher anyway. Uh, and then you see a lot of the broadways disappear. So a little bit of the jack ten, but now a lot of it just starts folding. Whereas before, um, these hands were playing a little bit more aggressively. Uh, same thing with the king ten. Now it's really only choosing the one with a club. Whereas before, it was able to raise more liberally. Uh, the king tens without the clubs. Uh, king jack becomes too strong now. It just pretty much starts playing call, et cetera, et cetera. So the only thing that really stays consistent is that your pocket pairs remain pretty aggressive. 
and now they're very suit sensitive. So they uh, specifically choose club, no backdoor diamond. Bluffing is hard. Bluffing yeah. is very, very, very hard. Um, all right, so we get to the turn. The club rolls off. Uh, he could play a lead, but it's mostly just check. Oh, wait, sorry. This is facing your raise. Uh, he could play a three bet, but it's mostly just call. Um, king of club turn. Yeah, I imagine this card's just going to shift things like pretty heavily in our favor where we're going to get the bet a lot, but not for a massive size. Um, so he could play lead. He actually plays like 13.5% lead, so maybe it doesn't shift things as far as... I would have naturally thought. Um, okay. Oh, you bet 46%. Yeah, our strategy does kind of polarize a bit. But because it's a flush completing card and the nuts are so high up in range. Um, so let's see if we can see. Let's look at breakdown. Um, yeah, so you can see that like the majority of our value is comprised of flushes and uh the majority of like our no made hand is a mix between ace high and then other shit um but we have a lot of like half of our unmade hands are some sort of draw or combo draw a little bit over half actually like 60 60 percent ish um and uh, whenever you look at like the best hands uh, or I guess where's the equity splits there we go man I haven't used wizard in a while okay there we go uh, yeah so like when you look at the equity splits it shifts a bit in our favor still um, oh wait no 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 sorry sorry it shifts against us so we're actually a bit of an equity dog here. Uh, pretty substantial, actually. But we have uh, a much more higher concentration to the best hands, which are going to be just basically flushes. Um, and he has a very high concentration to good and weak hands. So when this is the case, uh, this would yield a polarized strategy. But the biggest reason why we don't need the 2E is because... Uh, if we start to go too big, then what ends up happening is we flip this to where his range becomes a lot more polar in nature. So effectively what will happen is just the good and best hands will continue and the weak and the trash will fall off. And then we'll find ourselves in the river like pretty incapable of bluffing because you can see that we still have like twice as many trash hands as we do uh, best hands. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much where like all of our betting is coming from. So like when we go back to strategy, you can see... Yeah, like queen three is a mix. It it basically plays like uh, pure check when it's diamonds and pure bet otherwise. Um, Why is that? Well, if you have diamonds, then you block. Um, you block like some of the hands that you're trying to extract value from. Mm -hmm. So you want him to have like queen jack of diamonds or queen of diamonds, jack of clubs, that type of thing. And yeah. then you unblock more of the I, I mean i guess like all queen three is going to unblock clubs um but basically like diamonds are going to represent a lot of the backdoor type holdings like ace three of diamonds is going to call flop yeah. okay. um that you can try to extract value from for a smaller size here uh whatever the case may be and yeah uh you can see that the sizing is pretty capped here so we're going like 67 percent pot because any bet is relatively polar in nature and we want to be able to include hands like queen three we want to be able to include hands like, um, I mean, I guess we don't really have any King X, which kind of, oh, I guess we have like King Jack. Five deuce. Gotta Connie, are you there. defending ace three of diamonds there when I check raise you on the flop? Wait, what? You don't said, check I'm, raise. Uh, you, not, you don't Sorry, check raise. When I, when, position. I, when I raise you on the flop. I would never fold ace three of diamonds. You, you don't fold pairs. I wouldn't fold a pair. I wouldn't fold mm -hmm. a backdoor flush draw. I wouldn't fold a backdoor... Yeah, draw. ace three of diamonds is good. Like, I mean, like look, middle pair and a, you don't you don't full pairs. You back you call or three bet ace deuce. You call ace three pure. Uh, what else? What other threes? Man, I do feel you like have? blind Five, versus three. blind. I'm folding way too much. Yeah. I'm saying when I'm in the small blind and I get into these spots where like the big blind will just stab. Mm -hmm. I think I'm probably overfolding. If you're folding pairs or draws, like for oh, sure, I mean, I'm not folding draws, but I'm definitely backdoor I think, draws. I think I've I've folded pairs. Do you fold backdoor draws? Probably. 
Yeah, like, look, none, none of his pair range folds. All of his pocket pairs call, all of his 3x calls, all of his uh, gut shots call, all of his queen x, of course, calls. Can you... Um... The point of indifference falls at back doors, right? Like, um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, the point of indifference is basically back doors. Like, jack-10 of diamonds is indifferent between all three options, but prefers to raise. That type of stuff. Anything with um, backdoor diamonds and a backdoor straight draw usually calls, though, right? Um, so say a hand like uh, I want to say king four diamonds. No, no, no. You're going to be pretty sensitive with diamonds. You got to remember he chose to raise large. Yeah. You, what you're saying would be true if he chose the correct size. Okay. If he bet quarter instead of half, then yeah, all the diamonds with like hidden equity are going to. The correct size there would have been. Order. I went, I went Order 4x, five. is that right? You went 3x. And the correct size would have been like... Half of that. Oh, okay. Like 2.5x. He stabbed for like 3.5. Yeah, you would want to make it like 10. Nine. 9 or 10, yeah. I think 10 is quarter pot. Yeah. I mean, you could do the math really quickly, right? If you bet 350 into 10, that's 1750 in the pot, including your call, and a quarter of that would be like $4.25. So... Uh, yeah, it would actually, be like, it'd be like eight, eight bucks. bucks. Yeah, eight bucks would be. And I just feel like no one's going anywhere for eight dollars. You don't want them to go anywhere. Yeah. You don't. You have to stop thinking in the binary terms of like call and fold, raise and fold. That type I think of what stuff. What it does is their range, right? It's, it's like it's, it keeps their range. Well, wide. you want to create a point of indifference. Yeah. Some hand mm-hmm. will become indifferent for eight dollars. Yeah, there's like when they just have like nothing, right? So yeah. all their nothing folds. Yeah. Right. You kind of yeah. got to stop wanting to, um, like, your feelings. I feel like this is, like, you have something, like, type of. Um, well, this isn't just guapo. This is for sure this the vast that, majority. Yeah, of no, no, yeah, no, 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 people, no, yeah. no. But I, I feel like there's, like. You're saying I'm too emotionally tied to, like. Guapo. I think so. I don't think that you're emotionally tied to things. I think that you've learned through a conditioning process that, um that forces you to rely on desire in real time okay yeah that's better and i don't th- i don't think this is unique to you i think this is the vast majority of the way that people learn which is why i always highlight the academy that um you know most people are just taught the hand rankings because with hand rankings there's a clear desire i know why i'm betting queen three it's to get value and if i know that i'm betting queen three for value when a flush card comes and an over card comes that can complete a better two pair then I know what portion of my opponent's range I'm targeting. I'm targeting draws, targeting pair plus, and I'm targeting weaker one pairs. So I need the size appropriately for that. The difficulty becomes whenever you try to take that exact same mindset now into bluffing. How do you do the same thing whenever the desire doesn't matter anymore? Because the whole desire of bluffing is always to yield a fold. Mm -hmm. And this is where the idea of indifference comes from, right? Like you want to charge a price where you don't care what your opponent does and that's a weird way of framing it because you always care what your opponent does when you're bluffing you always want him to fold but you have to start to think about it through the the lens of equity when you're bluffing with equity um you just don't care you don't care right because you'll have a new strategic option on the next street so stop yelling at the screen on the turn yeah wait till the river okay (laughs) well i did it on both but Okay. Yeah, on the river, you really want him to fold. On the mm-hmm. turn, you just want to scream club. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. You want to, you want to drill the clean out. Or maybe You, you can learn that at the academy as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can, can, can definitely find that at the academy. Can we go back to the whiz? Yeah. I want to see river. Sure. Um, okay, so on turn, we're capped at like 67% pot. On river, it's probably going to be something similar, maybe like pot-ish. Um. He will kind of cap himself a bit when he chooses not to raise. Like when that that's the other thing. Like when you choose that size, uh, now you force more of his range to continue than just flushes. And it kind of forces his flushes to start to do some raising and do some heavy lifting itself because otherwise it can't play an all in pot. Um which is why it's less important for you to have the ace of clubs on the river. Uh, because most of the time the nuts are gonna want to start to put money in on the turn in order to grow the pot geometrically so that it can be all in on the river. Uh, so on the river, six of diamonds, when he chooses check, I imagine you're going to go like pot. Okay. 
So you do play some all in for two X pot. Actually, more than yes, more than four. Uh, I, I was like, no way. If oh, not fought. not with his hand. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Well, well, what are you talking about? Oh, Ace of exact, clubs, nine of diamonds. Yeah, exactly his hand. Exactly his hand. <laughs> Let's but, go. I'm a genius, baby. Well, you should never have it though. Um, I don't think <laughs> you already know. <laughs> Thanks for spotting that. Connor. Yeah. So your hand almost never bets the turn. So it bets like five percent of the time, and when it gets to the river, then it will shove. Ooh, I wonder. What, what and it's like one of, it's like one of one of one candidates that has the ace of clubs that jams because <laughs> it just never gets to the river. If it goes mm -hmm. check check turn, mm -hmm. I'm curious what happens river. We can't jam. I mean, I guess we. Can. Maybe if you face it's, bet. Yeah. Well, no. If, See, like even ace five chooses to bluff without the the ace of clubs it, it would prefer to bluff with the five of clubs mm. because it takes away um basically like his best bluff catchers hands like five four of clubs uh hands like king five or sorry uh jack five of clubs right like you you want to be blocking middle and lower flushes because those are the ones that are most likely to just go call call whereas the nuts are are going to want to play some sort of like check raise strategy on the turn at least some frequency, not always, obviously. Uh, what are you posturing, Conrad? If, if turn goes check, check. Let's say turn goes check, check. Mm -hmm. River. Check sauce. What's yeah, so our like We're jamming the jack of clubs a lot. If turn goes check, check. River gets checked to us. Okay. What is our action? With the ace of clubs? Yes. I would bet we'd probably pot it. That's what I was thinking, but just curious. If it does some psycho stuff. Nope, pure check. Pure check? Pure check with... Yeah. Okay. Because... Yeah, ace we... of clubs just doesn't bluff. Because it would bluff the turn. Yeah. Okay. Ace five a little bit, but that's because it blocks five four now. Okay, cool. But yeah, I mean, we were right. We'd only have pot as a bet. If... If it goes check, check, turn. Okay. Um, and now we'd be pretty reliant on uh, blocking like two pairs or or five four whenever we choose to bet. Gotcha. Like jack six turns itself into a bluff. So nice. in closing, Matt, pros and cons of the hand. Oh no, sorry, sorry, that's jack six clubs. Um, pros of the hand are uh, good, good hand selection. I think your your head's in the right place. Mm -hmm. Good identification of a flop raise spot. Um. And I think good follow through, even though it mechanically was like Not off. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like by river, you don't have the best candidate any longer. Uh, and you're not exactly choosing the, the best sizing scheme, but it's better to do that. Like it's better to, to have followed through with the hand, start to finish the way you played it, than to just always default to call, call, fold which is what would most likely happen. It would probably just go like call, turn king of clubs, he checks. Now, sometimes you check back, sometimes you stab for 40%. He calls, river brick, check, check, we lose. That type of thing. Um, cons of the hand, uh, just not just the sizing mechanics, but why the sizing mechanics are a little bit off. Um, not really recognizing the, the difference in the way board textures change. Um, yeah, I think I've been a little too eager to to want to um to want to start using uh, geo sizes. Like I just okay. I'm looking for spots to like, oh, I want to go geo two or geo three here, mm -hmm. but I don't think I'm applying them correctly. So I think that's something I need to uh, go back to the. What's well, cart before on. the horse, right? Uh, you're you're finding the polarized mechanic and applying it before you are able to identify actually how a range polarizes. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but the good news is is that like you're starting in the right place. Nut flush is the nut flush. Nut flush blocker is the nut flush blocker. So, like, if I'm going to polarize with hands, I may as well start with those two. Um, the the real challenge is that, like, when that card comes off on the turn, uh, a lot of those two regions are going to want to play a little bit more trappy, right? Which is why we condense down to a 67% pot size. Because, uh, sure, we have flushes and we have nuts and, and stuff like that, but it's way, way, way ahead. Um, and then we have a bunch of other hands that are too vulnerable to check back, right? Like queen three being a, 
a prime example of it. Uh, we just have to kind of get value now, make it at least a two street game and then potentially a three street game when we improve. That was a fun one. Yeah. That was interesting, man. So much for that 12 minute clock. There's a lot of yeah, stuff going on. Yeah, it kind of went over the 12 minutes, but that's okay. I think we started GTO Wizard stuff. right when the clock went off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 12 got, minutes isn't a lot of time to dissect a hand. No. I probably should just get better with the wizard of just saying, like, it says error here, 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 and here, and then just move off of yeah. it. Yeah. Off to farts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get into the real reason we came here. Uh, <laughs> the Triton updates, where apparently shitting yourself has become a part of the tour. Hey. <laughs> a lot knew? of money they're playing for. Well, Bats has got Ace King. He does. Oh, man. That's again. Let's try to hear the other one. My thing is why the fuck do we keep hearing it? Where are these <laughs> microphones? And why are they trying to muffle it with a cough? All right, here's, yes. here's numero uno. Are we comparing shits? Happy to be in the money, of course. <laughs> oh. All right, the first one definitely oh, shit himself. Look at me like that, Randy. <laughs> oh, is he you? No, but I mean, come on. Yeah, are they, pretty good. I, just, I don't know if they're real. No, they're, they're gotta real. Be real. They're, they're definitely, definitely real. Man, I don't know. I just don't get where the fuck these microphones are, man. Like, I just don't understand. I want to know who the most probable culprit is. Are you? Do we think it's a player? Or do we think it's in the booth? No, no it's definitely it's a, a player. player for sure. There's no, there's no overlap between the booth in Poker Go and the Who's booth in Triton. Who's just shitting themselves at the table? It happens all the time. You don't ever get smacked in the face by somebody who just like let one fly. Yeah, but I mean, <sighs> it's always such an uncomfortable feeling because there's only nine of you at the table. You know that one of you did it, <laughs> and like it's kind of like a game of werewolves. Let's run it back just one time. Thanks. Happy to be in the money, of course. <laughs> Whoever, look at me like whoever that, cleared Randy. their throat was the, was the culprit. Obviously, yeah. they were trying to cover up the sound. They're like, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> the timing is. I, off. Heard the, I heard the same sigh of relief afterwards, though. Like, yeah, you can't well, just give it a. Uh, <laughs> and expect no one to know it was you. I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. These. The, the, it's it's kind of like a game of werewolves where you shit yourself and you know that you're the werewolf. And everybody else knows that they're the Not, innocent right. uh, villager. <laughs> and it just becomes a debate between the nine of you of which one of you did it. Yeah. And you have to put on your best game face. Yep. Just be like, it wasn't me, bro. Right. It just wasn't me. I mean, you would think if you were sitting next to the person, right? If you were just, if you were just sitting next to the person that you'd be able to, I don't know, know that it's them. I mean, right? you would certainly like, Smell something, right? Well, it's not I about mean, the smell, it's about the sound. It's about the sound. A, the sound. Like, sound. like, that was loud enough, obviously, for the, the, the mic to pick it up. If you're sitting next to someone, you just hear them fart. Like, you would... I right? Wouldn't you know? Quite honestly, I was coming to the conclusion that the mics are in their assholes. <laughs> it sounds like, like it. Quite honestly, like, where else would these mics be? I just don't get it. It just doesn't make any sense. How good are these fucking mics, man? Picking up everything. They are picking up everything, including a buzz that's driving me fucking <laughs> insane. <laughs> I thought both. it was my mic. It's not. It's not that mic. I don't know what it is, but I'm oh losing my. it, man. <laughs> I'm losing it. Yeah. Um, there has been a lot going on at Triton outside of Fartgate 2.0, which, for what it's worth, <laughs> I would love to get to the bottom of this. Someone needs to be shamed. Mm -hmm. Shame needs to be brought down upon your house for not just relieving yourself at the table, but for enjoying it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with the with the the gas afterwards can't take it uh our our friend of the pod ryan DePaulo, he's out there he's My doing man. the lord's work in the streets he's in a 40k bounty today i believe yes said sitting next to bonomo in a 40k mystery bounty at triton i'm determined to solve all of america's political differences by level four we'll update i don't think it happened guys i don't yep. think it happened 
said update two peace talks reached an impasse and we both have headphones on now set to resume later <laughs> <laughs> oh wait prior to that update one i told him about the previous tweet he said cool i look forward to it possible sarcasm uphill battle ahead the update three He's got move tables yeah. gg america yeah, it's over it is over um, all hope is lost <laughs> we're we're poking a little bit of fun at it and obviously we're not about to even begin to wade our waters into global politics but uh it's been impossible to not see it on the timelines as as of late and it's a complicated issue matthew yeah it is and you know what it's way above my pay grade mm-hmm. so i'm happy to just see some updates from a major poker tournament where they're gambling for millions of dollars and uh we can kind of distract ourselves from what's going on in the rest of the world for at least a short period of time um we kind of reported on this. Well, I don't know. Reported on it. We celebrated this on Friday. The one and only Dan Smith, Pickleball Dan, legend of the game, finally picks up some Triton hardware, his first trophy uh, on the tour, I believe, ever. And he did it in style. He won the 200K uh, Pro-Am Invitational for, I believe it was $3.5 million. Uh, you can wild. click that show payouts and we can know for sure. Uh, 3.8 million. Yeah. He beat Mario heads up. Uh, Elton Sang, who <laughs> did someone extremely dirty on the bubble. Um, I saw that. Tell me yeah. more. I know we, nothing we, about we don't this. have the hand. I actually but edited that. Yeah. Elton was second in chips. I can't remember who was against, but he was fifth in chips. I want to say it's Ace King versus Ace Queen. It was Ace right? King suited versus Ace Queen off, uh, where Ace King suited open cut off her button out and three bet out of the big and then he elected to go small for he went that. really small to induce yeah. which is so gangster on a on an icm bubble uh granted you know it was only 300k bubble so only one, his name is pardo i think so yeah i think you're right one pardo one yeah. pardo yeah um so it's only 1.5 buy-ins to cash and you know even though it's a large sum of money that matters in the way that you want to think about icm so uh you know he just knew that he had his man right where he wanted him Got him to stick it in and then uh, found the old queen ball right on the turn ski. Mm-hmm. Legend. Gave out a massive chip lead heading into the money. Um, Dan Smith, I think, was somewhat short, but he bagged close to chip lead, if not the chip lead with like uh, 10 or 11 left heading into the final table. And it looked like it was pretty smooth sailing from there. So big congratulations to Pickleball Dan. Love to see the kid get off the schneid. Right. What a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful thing for everybody involved. Um, <laughs> A lot of other winners uh, since then. Uh, we saw a, um, was it a 50K bounty event won by Jonathan Jaffe where he just absolutely snapped off Brian Kim's dick heads up <laughs> with like fourth pair by the river on a flush completing uh, river card. Shout out to Brian Kim. This kid has like, he's, he's as cold-blooded as they come, man. You he played just, cash with him, right? Yeah. He's very, very good, very talented individual, understands the game really well, really great instincts. Um, the As the hand was playing out, he had like 10-4 suited, and I think it came uh, like uh, maybe maybe king six deuce or something like that. Uh, and Jaffe had queen six. And I think it was Ali or um, maybe Nananoku who was in the booth calling for... Oh, it was, it, sorry, it was Nananoku and... Uh, Henry and Henry goes I don't know a five on the turn oh, no. and we could just see him run it and it comes in <laughs> offsuit five and uh, sure enough like Kim just goes for it and then the flush completes on the river and he has like 10-4 of hearts uh, it's it's a black run out and it's like oh man this one's not going to be fun to to push through on and sure enough he just like pulls the trigger and Jaffe in like no short order just goes I call <laughs> so gangster Sick. so gangster oh. and, and talking about pushing through shout out to uh to henry kilbane i know he's been a little bit under the weather for the first couple of days of triton and uh he's pushed through and he sounds like he's doing much Bro, better i love henry's commentary i love it so much i've, I've caught a couple highlights oh behave it's so good man <laughs> it's such a good line yeah like behave. the the worst card in the deck just rips off on the turn and he'll go oh behave maria <laughs> behave i think he hit your boy santosh with one of those i don't know if you saw that but at the final table santosh mm-hmm. had the nut flush versus a turned straight flush oh my god the guy could not have been happier he walked off the table just smiling saying good luck to everyone he's great santosh is the best 
He's the absolute best, uh, as is Henry. Big shout out to my man out there doing big things in Triton. Um, we had a new winner in the 100K today. Uh, Vogel Sang came back from one big blind Amazing. at the final table. Wild turn of events at this final table. It was very topsy turvy. Nacho. Not, bro, you're Nacho, okay? <laughs> Number one. Year of fucking Nacho. Let's get that out of the way right now. How is he just do it? Not only does he do it, but he manages to talk the robot of all robots into a fucking chop heads up. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself is a victory that no one else can ever attest to having. He chopped when he had one big blind? No, 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 nothing like that. Um, I'm not sure at what point he actually only had one big blind remaining, but uh, somewhere coming into or at the final table, he was crippled down to one big blind, you know, as tournament players like to do. They leave that one chip behind just in and case. you never know. Uh, and they find the muck, and then you just hit the spin cycle and run it all the way up. Jonathan Jaffe, final table, this one as well for another 500 dimes. He got seventh place. Sick. Uh, so he won the mystery, or sorry, he won the, yeah, I think it was the mystery by uh, for 500k plus bounties, which were worth like 180, um, and then he gets uh, seventh in this for another 500k. So seven figure trip for my man Jaffe. Although he probably has at least half that in buy-ins as well. <laughs> it's expensive to go to fucking Triton, man. It really is, dude. Nacho is just meant to win everything. Nacho's mm -hmm. the best. He just does it. This man. was at this final table. So Elton made this final table as well. This is his second of the uh the early series. I think they were on event six or seven right now. Um, Ivy, the man, the myth, the legend, he was here briefly. He ended up getting ninth. Uh, this situation, we see Jonas all in with Queen Jack off, turns the nuts, uh, dry side pot, so it goes check, check on the flop where Elton had overcalled ace, queen suited. Probably could have just gripped it and ripped it pre. Um, yeah. It looks like he was like kind of playing ICM. He was a little bit on the shorter side. Didn't want to get Pink. trapped maybe, but... Oh, hello. Jeez. Now we see the worst case scenario uh, for one Elton, and Nacho's just going to play fucking Grim Reaper here and eliminate two men in one hand. Mm -hmm. You dream of these types of runouts. Yes. You dream of them. Uh, nothing anybody could really do here. I think Elton could have jammed pre. That's pretty much the only thing that, that could have uh, changed here. I think if he jams pre, Nacho probably has to fold ace 10. And then uh, Elton sees the bad news and he loses the Queen Jack anyway. <laughs> <laughs> max fucking pain. Yeah, me. the max pain. So maybe that's like one of those things where you don't jam the Ace Queen suited because of the collusion effect, and uh, you know you kind of want that all-in player to be eliminated. So I don't, I don't really know. I don't know shit about tournaments. If you would <laughs> like to know more about tournaments, we got a lot of content over at SolferY.io. Uh, kind of went through the. The entire inventory yesterday. We got a lot of MTT stuff, man. That Matt Hunt. Yeah. That Matt Hunt, he's... Uh, he's in there grinding. He works. He puts it out, man. He he does a lot of shit mm -hmm. for MTTs. Yeah. Does it, man. I didn't know if there was audio for that or not. <laughs> that roll, a, baby. That was a brief look at one of Matt's courses. Uh, you can head over to software.io. We are going to be... Actually, we're going to be running a pre-Black Friday sale very shortly. So stay tuned to more details for that. Uh, hopefully, we'll have them to you for tomorrow. Or um, EV going up. What's going up? People's EV. Yeah. Not our bottom line. <laughs> for here, the people, babe. Out here giving it for away. For the people. Oh, the holidays are coming. You got to give everything away cheap. Hey, you know, it's a spirit of giving. <laughs> End of the year shit. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we have going on here? There was a pretty wild hand played in the PokerGo studios. And I say wild, I mean like wild like bingo night with Granny on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, if this isn't a case for why split pot games should just die, <laughs> I don't really know what is. What happened? Uh, so it looks like Rapaski and Kai are all in here. Um, and with two to come, uh, Rapaski has a five low. And Kai has a six low with top pair. What ends up happening, you see, is Rapaski backs into two pair with mm -hmm. the old three Dewey. Yep. And, or, yeah, 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 yeah with the old three Dewey. So, uh, so he turns a flush draw. Low. Right, he turns a flush draw, but then he backs <laughs> into the two pair. And now he doesn't have a low. And he beats Kai's high. And they don't even realize this? No. <laughs> but here's the strangest thing of all, Conrad. 
he doesn't it's not that he doesn't <laughs> it's not that he doesn't realize that his low hand uh came into a high it's that somehow he thinks he gets scooped here that is the most confusing aspect to me he's like here you go so All right. he seemed to recognize <laughs> he seemed, Wait, the he dealer didn't to, the dealer didn't catch uh, it either i mean i don't know man <laughs> I, I honestly don't know what's happening I don't Wait, who know. I think the dealer this? knows. Nope. She might've mucked his hand. Okay. So here's the crazy thing. Rapaski doesn't recognize that he now has a high. Oh no. He's looking at the trophy, but he does <laughs> recognize that he no longer has a low. How did it not click that one of these things is not like the other? Right. I mean, yeah. I get it, man. The lights are on. I get it. I've You're mucked nervous. the winner before. Okay. <laughs> I think he just like blacked out and thought he was just playing high only. <laughs> Neither of them have any fucking clue what's going on right now. <laughs> so who lets them know? The producer? Someone from the back, I imagine. That's I don't know. Like they're bringing up the goddamn lights for the winner's photo right now. That's fucking hilarious. He's like, oh wait, one, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to chop this pot. <laughs> I think we're we're gonna have to chop this pot. <laughs> Let me take a picture Let of this. Let me take a picture of this. <laughs> One of us is an idiot. We can't determine who. Look, they're, they're still up. bringing out the camera. Oh, my God. <laughs> they still, at this point, I still don't think they know it's a chop. They just can't. Is there audio to this? What is going on now? Why is... I have twos and threes. There yes. we go. It's a chop. Oh, there we baby, go. Come on. Oh my God. Oh, there yeah. we go. He got there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what perfect timing to bring in the audio. I was like, do I have to go out there? Like, what? I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> you can't go out there. You're on 30 minute delay. Yeah. Yeah, it's not yes. over. It's a fucking job. What the? I didn't, I didn't see that either, obviously. Oh, oh man, that's, that's so that's good. That's so amazing. Oh, guys. Yeah, maybe you guys should guys. be cut off from the mimosas. <laughs> okay. I want to know how both of them Ah, Listen. I need to make a campaign to you and to you at home. We got to get in these mixed game streets. Yeah, <laughs> bro, we got to get in these mixed game streets. These people don't know what the fuck is going on, man. We just got to get out there. They got a mixed game every, uh, every day over at South Point. <laughs> well, South Point streets. Is where, all right. You're going to find us learning at the yep. South Point, trying mm -hmm. to figure out how these high-low split games work. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I've, I get it. Double board bomb pots, they get confusing. Mm -hmm. You need a good dealer in there. You it's do. very clear. And the other thing is mixed games are usually policed by the players. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I have no idea. These guys could be consummate professionals. They could be amateur. I have no idea. I don't know them from Adam. Uh, I just know that this makes me feel like the games are soft. Yeah. It just like, strikes me uh, as maybe, maybe there's some win rate out there. I mean... Yeah. There is no content for mixed games, really. There is no content. No. Well, I think there's a reason for that. What's that? They're boring, man. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, people don't get better over time. There ain't nothing flashy about putting in your third big bet on the turn. Whatever. Just people, to chop the pot. Yeah. People don't have something to go do to get better over time. No, they that's true. They just play the same. That, mm -hmm. That's true. And it's a beautiful... All these mixed I don't know. Games. I think Bart Hansen does some uh, PLO8 content. Maybe. Eight. Yeah, maybe uh, Ethan will start blogging. Uh, oh, well, why, why not? He's just a natural. He can get there good at go. everything. Yeah. Wow, He's look at him! What it's like fucking win? life. Just flop a fucking straight on your final hand. Wait, what did mm -hmm. he win? Uh, he won the twenty two hundred Canadian buy in at Playground. I'm not sure what series is going on there. Um, oh, they're but doing I saw, a WPT. Okay, I was gonna say I saw Tom there, so that would make sense. Here's a nice flex for a uh, rampage. So when I put stuff into OBS to like bring up for assets, um, if you use the same thing once already, it won't let you. Mm. So I was trying to put it in as rampage wins, and it's like, no, you've already used it. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I put, uh, yes. I literally put rampage wins again. He goes, nope, you nope, can't use that. that. <laughs> I put Ethan wins tournament. I couldn't use that one either. <laughs> Wow. I can't believe you just didn't put a number next to it. <laughs> Rampage wins one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't believe he wins this many tournaments. I mean, the man's out there. He grinds. You know, say what you want. What? He's out there. He grinds. He puts in a little bit of work, I guess. He what, does it. What a path for this young man. What, what a, I mean, we've watched him grow right before our eyes. He was just... He was... <laughs> 
he was he was such a jovial know nothing when he first started streaming during the bracelet events in 2020 yeah i mean he was like just a fanboy out there every night obviously final tabled one and then won a bracelet because why of course why the fuck wouldn't he but yeah man what a trajectory since then amazing kids started playing he played the million dollar buying cash game he won a 50k high roller he plays you know nosebleed cash on the regular now mm -hmm. He's getting fucking duped by Dustin the Closer. You know how much you have to make it? <laughs> you know how, how big time you got to be to be a target of Dustin the Closer? He's not my DMs. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> I haven't heard from Dustin all year. We should send him a hot tub. Mm. <laughs> Who, Dustin or, no, Dustin or Rampage? No, uh, Dustin. Oh, okay. I was going to say, Rampage might appreciate it. Oh, man. <sighs> tournaments i love him i'm going back i'm back he's back baby i'm back it's been a little break since wsop but i like poker again mm -hmm. i'm excited to get out there let's well, go good we, thing, got we got that tournament up. next week yeah, lucky for you one week away what napt you're gonna be the boots on the ground our sideline reporter oh uh, no i literally i'm gonna be yeah mm -hmm. coming to us live from the resorts world it's true it's connie time it's, it right. is connie time there's no lie there and then i'm gonna win the bird I'll take second. You, you want to know what I find to be so frustrating with MTTs? It's here we go. All the losing? Well, yeah. That, <laughs> that, I mean, that seems like an easy well, answer. Like, here's what I've accepted with cash. Like, I'll show up to a cash game and win more than half the time. Well, in the first hour, I'm going to be stuck or I'm going to be up. And then the second hour, I'm going to continue to be stuck or I'm going to continue to be up. <laughs> and I'll swing. You know, throughout my session, I'll be there for eight hours. I'll put it in. And I know that after the eight hours, whatever way the deck fell in my favor or against me for that day is going to be reflective in my bottom line, right? And I'm just going to get to go home with more or less money than I started the day with. But in tournaments, my friends, in tournaments, you go through this exact same parabolic up and down, but every time you hit the fucking down, they kick you out. <laughs> well, and you always and they send you home. Yeah, you always go home with less money on day one. That's true too. <laughs> That's also very true. But even whenever you're on that high, you're on that upswing, and you win all the goddamn chips. That's not even the purpose. That's not even the point of the event because you got to show up again tomorrow for day two. Yeah, but they give you a bag and you get to put your chips in the it's bag. It's true. You get to take a picture. Yeah, take a picture Some of it. Some people do shake Put it on social media. Shake. Say, I found a bag. I, I found just, a bag. You Woo! know, I just can't wrap my head around the psychology of playing a game where the final outcome, the ultimate, the ultimate goal is to have every single chip that is in play. That's because that's never happened to you. That's true. <laughs> that, that part's also true. But the, the final goal is to have every single chip in play. Hey. However, the path to that goal, the, 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 actual, the, the actual strategy behind achieving that goal is almost like the opposite. Is to do the exact opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not to care about winning a single chip at any given time throughout yes. the event. And it's just a matter of like figuring out ways to just be a cockroach. Yeah. And then so, when you do win all the chips, mm -hmm. you only get a, you know, a small percentage. Yeah, of, a little of the, sliver. Of the little they sliver cut you off a little, little piece you of the pie. Here's 15% of, uh, you know, all the money. It's a beautiful thing. It's so hard. Oh, yeah, but it's I know, but it's thing. so beautiful when it happens. And you're yeah. holding that trophy up. I'm back. You know? I can't wait. Yeah. I'm excited. Oh, I know. We got a whole bunch We're of, in there, baby. of uh, poker lined up. The glory up. is back. Can't wait. It's don't about the glory, the, uh, Burke. Don't forget mm -hmm. the last longer. Oh, the last longer. Oh, yeah. We got a hundred dollar last longer. How much you guys pay me? Hundred bucks. I'm gonna play so fucking tight. <laughs> <laughs> Tortoise approved. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All I gotta do is last longer uh, than uh, till one landing rockets it off with deuces. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, he'll be money. done. He's hundred percent not making it out of day one. Maybe the first level. I mean, he made it out of day one of the Venom. That's why he's not here. No, that's true. Yeah. Good luck there, Landon. He already Good luck, busted. Lando. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> GG, <GG>, Landon. <laughs> oh, rough man. days out there, man. Rough days. Rough, rough life. Tournament rough days hard. ahead. Rough days ahead. Um, all right. Let's get out of here. Oh, what are you doing today? 
Um, I'm working. Are I'm trying. Working? I'm trying to get us rich okay. by yes. giving it all away. That's all the right. way to do it. Little did little did I know that's not a very good recipe. Yeah. For getting rich. Um, we have a fun show for you guys tomorrow. It's gonna be the Halloween special, so we're gonna be coming in costume. It's gonna be a great one. I mm -hmm. promise. Oh, I'm so excited for my costume. Are we? Uh, yeah. Uh, you didn't get the fucking memo. No. Okay. Well, figure it out. You got 24 <laughs> hours. Uh, in the meantime, head over to our Twitter at OnlyFriends underscore pod and answer the following prompt. What are mom and dad mad at you for this time? Mm. We'll read those on air tomorrow. We're going to be joined in studio by Nikki, Melissa, Landon, Tortoise, Guapo, and Connie. Full cast tomorrow. Rocking out in our costumes. Ooh, I scary. thought you were going to say cock out. Mine's going to be so, so good, man. <laughs> Mine's going to be so good. No, he's not going to be landing in a towel again. No. Uh. <laughs> that was a one and done. All right, looking forward to it. We'll see you guys all tomorrow. Later, squad. Peace. Peace.